Hi guys, Paul from Natasha Scale Modeler. So welcome to part 11 of our techniques guide. Bit of a change from what I said last time. I said I was going to go straight to decaling um, in part uh, 11 we're doing today. I've changed my mind. We're going to do a few more uh, steps on painting. A little bit of weathering using paint. Um, so what we're going to do, and this is something I've never done before in a World War II aircraft, we're going to add some post shade. sorry not post shading, we're going to add some fading to the paintwork. It doesn't really need uh, post shading because the pre-shading is showing through really nice, I can't see the point in doing it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add some lighter tones, I'm going light, to lighten the centre of the uh, panels. Uh, I've practiced off camera uh, on a spare piece of styrene which I'll show you in a minute. Um, it didn't work as well on RLM2 but it did on RLM71 because it's a dark colour so it shows through better but we'll still do both parts and we'll see what's what. Uh, I also said I wasn't going to attempt the mottling, I changed my mind, I am. Uh, the last time I tried mottling on an aircraft was probably two and a half years ago, maybe three years ago now. I don't just got back into the hobby, I've been back into the hobby now four years. So, you know, I was a relative newbie, I could never get it quite right, I always mucked it up. And the one time I did get it right, it was quite thick, uh, it was on an Edouard uh, BF110. It was a bit thick, looked a bit blotchy, um, so I avoided it all that time. Now, I had a little practice the other day, I just got a spare piece of shot styrene. Um, I did the RLM02 and the 71. Uh, the RLM02 has been lightened, it's quite hard to see. And the RM71 was as well, but I've gone over it with mottling. I've gone a bit closer. That kind of mount looks good, so you've got random patterns, random sizes, all of the RLM02. Obviously, on the aircraft, it's not going on the RLM71, it's going on the RLM65 on the side of the fuselage. So, obviously, oh, bloody canopy, it's fell off about 10 times this already. Um, so, obviously, it's going to look different on there, it's going to be a bit more of a subtle effect than it looks on there. But this proves to me that I can do it, um, so I thought, right, okay, let's give it a shot. You're going to see me do it live on camera, so if it goes wrong, you're going to witness it. So, it'll be your fault at the end of the day. Uh, now, to do this, what it's going to involve, and I'm not going to mask off the entire plane, each panel I come to to do, I'll run through a couple of them with you in each colour. Uh, I'm just going to quickly, a piece of masking tape on each part, uh, just to mask it off from the next one. Just so I can get in all these panel uh, sections in the middle without worrying about any overspray. Uh, and I'll just show you how I do it on there, on the RLM02, the 71. And I'll do the whole aircraft, we'll come back and then I'll get on with the modeling. So, what we'll do, we'll move over to the paint booth uh, and we'll get this going. Another thing quickly before we go, obviously I've got the two camera system have you seen. I've added a third one uh, directly in front of me. Hope it looks okay. This is the first time I've tried it. Uh, again, you guys are witnessing it first hand. Uh, it's a different camera. It's actually my phone, believe it or not. Uh, so I hope the audio sounds okay as well. I'll find out in editing and we'll see. Hopefully if it works. It's a lot more work for me because it's the third bit of footage to edit. Uh, two of them takes long enough to have my three. But I think this frontal view, you know, it's quite handy. It gives you a nice shot that the side one can't quite get. And overhead's a little bit close. Um, and you know, it's not the best shot all the time, so hopefully this frontal shot will add a bit more interest. And if it works, I'll keep do using it, and it'll certainly make the video builds a bit more interesting as well. So we'll see how that goes. Obviously, I can't add the frontal shot into the spray booth, because it'd be getting sprayed on. So it's only from on the workbench actually working. When I'm in the spray booth, you just get the same uh, two-camera shot you get when I'm here. So, move it to spray booth. Uh, I'll get a little bit of masking done up to show you the way I'm going to do it, and we'll get on with a bit of the panel lightning. Right, okay, uh, spray booth, got the RLM02, so we're just going to lighten this with a little bit of Mr. Hobby uh, flat white. Uh, only a tad, just to get a shade all you know, different. And all we're going to do is lighten these uh, panels right in the middle, and hopefully accentuate the pre-shading and make it look a bit better. Like I said, I've never done this on a, a World War II aircraft, not on jets, uh, and it works really well, but like I said, I've never done it on this, especially on the splinter camera as well. So what I'm going to do for each little section, I'll show you one section of the RLM02 and one of the RLM71. Uh, obviously we'll be here all day if you watch me do every single bit. Uh, I'm just going to mask it off so that I don't need to worry about overspray. Getting it everywhere and ruining the paint job I spent so long doing the other day. So it's just a quick... Mask up, make sure you actually get hard to the edge. Obviously, you're not fully spraying it, so 
if you're not right up, it's not the end of the world. But obviously it's in your interest to get it there as close as possible. Uh, somebody did leave a comment the other day on the channel saying I should freehand this. Well, there goes the canopy again. If I freehanded the uh, hard edge, it really wouldn't be hard edge. So, sadly that's not the case. Uh, hard edge for me means hard edge. There are all other ways of doing this. You can use a bit of plastic hard uh, sheet. And you could use some white tack and actually raise the plastic hard off the model by a few mil. And that will give you a softer edge for the hard edge, if that makes sense. I don't like the look of that. Uh, whether it's realistic of being this hard, I don't know. Um, but I have the look of it, and that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm just going to try and find this canopy, which disappeared on the floor. About the million time today. Back in there. So a little bit more tape just there. I'll use that. So slightly thicker stuff. Just to get in this awkward. especially live on camera and I can't get right up to the model there we go, that'll do and then just for a little bit of extra protection model, a little bit thicker to the edge now I know you guys are going to have a shot there sadly I can't get as wide a shot here as I do on the desk because the light doesn't go as high that's what my cameras are mounted on my workbench lights, so there we go this is masked off the OM71, leaving this the O2 exposed. So now we can get some painting. So I just get comfortable. Move the masking tape out of the way. Got the Evolution. It's a 20, 24 psi. We're going to be exact. A bit of the uh, Mr. Hobby H70, which is the RLM O2 grey. We don't need a lot. There we go. A couple of drips all over my hand. So you get paint on your fingers and make sure you get it off. And I would use a little bit of airbrush cleaner to make sure you have fully removed it. Because if you touch that model, you're going to get paint marks and what have you all over it. And ruin your hard work. And again, if you can, keep your paint lids, or bottle lids, as clean as possible. To make them easier to open because there's nothing worse than sticking shut. And if you haven't got one, that Mr. Hobby opening tool is an absolute lifesaver. Um, it will budge all the stubborn lids. So, as you can see, about not even half a mil of paint in there. And all we're going to do is add a touch of white just to lighten the shade. And the way I'm going to do that is if one of my Sammy are mixing tools. Just gonna dab it in. Take it a couple of drops to fall in, like that. Wipe it off, wipe it on the bench. And then we'll give it a stir. Put that out of the way. Now what you're not gonna do here, like you see me do quite a lot, is I I like to put the paint back into the um, uh, bottle once I'm done. If you've lightened it, don't do that obviously because you're going to change the colour of your paint in your uh, bottle. So that's not a good thing to do. A little bit of thinner. Give it a good mix. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my little test sheet I had from the other day. And I'll test it on that to see what it looks like. So there we go, there's a test sheet I did the other day. Make sure we pull this through enough. We get our nice thin lines as we always do. Write the name.
So they're just doing dots. And making sure we can actually physically see them. So there is a difference in the paint. You see as well, well, our UMP thinner actually dries. You can see the wetness, if I can catch it, there you go. Bit of air on it. So we're going happy with that. There is a, a tonal difference there. Just like my compressor stop. Uh, like I say, keep checking your fingers. Make sure you've got no paint on you. Because the worst thing in the world is to touch it and get paint everywhere. Uh, so what we'll do, all we're going to focus on is the centre of the panel lines. Where we've got our pre-shading, you can see the darker panel lines. We're going to accentuate the centre of these. Uh, panels and hopefully that'll give it a, a nice one effect so pop the spray booth on I'll try and speak up so you guys can hear and all we're going to do is lightly quite randomly get some blotches Right in the middle, front of all these edges. I think it's going to be quite hard for you guys to see this on this particular colour. Literally due to its colour. I can see it, I don't know if you guys can, I'd be surprised if you can. But the centre of that now is all irregular. It's slightly different colour. Once you, once you get a few dabs in, cut two air to dry it, and that gives a nice bit of tonal variation on the actual paintwork. Now, if I was brave, I wouldn't bother masking, and I'd go straight ahead. So, since I'm a bit of a rebel, as I said on the board the other day, I'm going to do just that. No mask. Just gonna go ahead. I know the tolerance is there, brushes I know how tight I can get these lines, and I am literally, if you can see that sheet, I am doing that. Going back and forth on the trigger. This is giving me nice controlled blotches. And I can see exactly where they're going and I may. Away with not masking. We have a big one there, so you can dry that off. Perfect. You can say I've lost it, I don't know if you can see it. We've got a wet patch. Put to air, it's gone, that's all how well off then it works. Now I've got some nice tonal variation there in those two sections there. You can see it's a lot lighter. I can see it whether you guys can or can't, I don't know. You'll see it on the RLM 71. So I'll move to that in a minute uh, again. Whether I'm quite brave enough to do that colour in freehand, I don't know, but I'll give it a whirl. Let's do this in it. Did I do that bit? I don't think I did, did I? Time to time, go back to your paper, just pull the paint through a little bit because you'll find it may start to dry. It's not going to be difficult to pull through. Yeah, that's a nice effect, a nice subtle effect on that colour. So, 
Like I said, you can't really see it. I can see it to make it out, but whether you guys can or can't, I don't know. Just add a little bit to there. So what I'm actually doing, you can see the spine on the top. I'm going for the centre of each one of these panel lines. So all I'm doing is literally a quick little, oh, too much. See where I've got too much? Let's see if we cut to where I get rid of that. I'm literally just... So as you can see, all I'm actually doing is spraying in each one of the on top spine, on the all ammo 2 the grey. I'm actually just spraying like that in the centre of each panel line. And then just moving it across to give a slight random pattern in other areas. Now I didn't really want to do this freehand. I've started to now. What helps massively, if you angle the aircraft so you've got light, you can actually see the paint landing where it's wet. That does help a lot. Obviously, you make a mistake, you can come back, you can mask it off, um, start again. It's not the end of the world. Obviously, if you get it in one go, then it's much better. Uh, quite happy with that. A tiny little bit of overspray there. Let's just knock that off for a second. A little bit of it seeped through. Just there, onto the RLM 65. So I'm going to just grab a cotton bud. Let's see if we can just gently remove that bit, which is not going to shift. So, we'll try a little bit of airbrush cleaner. So, a tiny, tiny bit of cleaner. Just to see if we can take that off. Right, so I've got the paint off, it's taking a tiny, tiny little bit of the RLM65, you can see where it's shiny there, so what I'll do, I'll rectify that before we come back for the mottling, uh, and I'll show you how I'll do that, I'll literally just mask up to that line and a little bit of RLM65 will be sorted, uh, in fact, I may do it right now for you, quickly, so uh, before we get to that, so that's all the RLM02, I'm quite happy with that mottled effect we've got there um, adds a bit of interest and a bit of depth to the paintwork uh, on the RLM71 certainly will because I saw that the other day myself when I was um, playing about with it right so I'm going to put a little dab of RLM65 in there, a little bit of thinner uh, I asked you guys some feedback on the form of my videos and I got a lot of very very helpful valuable feedback and one of you what did say, or well, I think a couple of you did, when things go wrong, could I shout to fix it? Well, there we go, there's a good example. I screwed up a little bit doing it freehand, being a bit cocky. Um, so, I'll show you how I rectify it. It's literally a case of a bit of masking tape. As I say, it's that there, if you can see that, there you go, right there, you can see the light catching it. It's just where I've removed the uh, paint with some thinner. Sorry, cleaner. So what you need to do is mask right up to the paint above it, but not over it. Otherwise you'll lose the effect. There 
There we go, that's fine. And obviously, if it's a different colour or a stronger colour than what you're spraying, make sure you put a little bit over the top, like so. All oh, M65's in there, let's get, did they give it a stare? I can't remember. There we go, let's give it a little bit of a stare. What bother with the booth, it's only a small bit of paint. If I hold this way around. Always make sure you pull it through. All I'm going to do is dot and dab. And there we go. Gone. So that quick, that simple. Paintwork I am hooked up. That damn canopy. Is now spot on. No sign of where I went over. Perfect. So that's that. I'll clean this up, get ready for the RLM71, and we'll come back in a minute. Okay, so we're back. RLM71 now. So exactly the same as before. Just move these other paints out of the way. Keep the white there because we need that. So RLM71 H64. A little bit of a shake. Undo the bottle. Paint again, put the lid on because you're not going to put this back in because it's lightened paint, you don't want to be adding it back to your paint you've already got. And exactly the same as before, we're going to add a couple of dabs of uh, Mr. Hobby Flat White, which is H11. One, two, get the rest of it off. The back on a little bit of UMP thinner, so it's probably a little bit too much, but we'll see. Give it a good mix. As per always, I'm just going to move out of there. I've got white paint on my fingers now, so I need to be very careful. In fact, we'll clean a little bit off. Excuse the state of my hands at the minute as well. A bit of plumbing work the other day, so I'm shred my hands to bits on a uh, tap valve, trying to get a spindle out, which was rather stubborn. And rather than using pliers, I did it the manly way and just gripped it with my hands, and it's absolutely shredded my fingers. So. Make sure the paints are well and truly pulled through. My little test card. So it looks like what you can do, you know, obviously you can spray it on, if it's not light enough you can come back, you can add a bit more white, so I'm going to put the spray booth on now. Go and check your hands are clean, pick it up, pick it up, push. spray it over to move any debris. It's spitting a little bit, so I'm going to a little bit more thinner. Hopefully that'll stop it, because you don't want this spitting and going all over the oil limit too. Exactly the same as before, right in the centre panel. Just doing random spots. Right up to the lead edges, and obviously be aware. Of where you're painting colour, because you don't want to be going a little bit too close to it. 
ruining all your hard work. I think I'm going to darken it up a little bit, it looks a little bit too light to me. But it's me being a little bit hypocritical because I'm quite overcritical in my way, but it just looks a little bit too light. You just want to shave like you don't want it too like to look a bit odd. Then. Just a shave like than what you actually you actually got on there. There we go. That's much better. What it was doing is giving me almost a mottled effect on the wing, which I didn't really want. I just want. Slightly lighter. Okay. Excellent. So we're a real tricky bit here at the back of the spine. So, have a good look around, see if you see any areas that you might think could benefit a little bit more. And just you know, add it where you think. I don't know how you guys can see that or not. It looks quite good to me. There we go, I'm quite happy with that. Just turn it off, the compressor's going, but you'll still be able to hear me hopefully. So there we go, that's our LM65, uh, sorry, 71. It's giving quite a good effect, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe I'll see it better on the wider shot. It's giving a nice tonal difference in all the paintwork. Quite heavy to the freehand, it wasn't too bad. Like I said, I've got good control of that airbrush. I know exactly where it's going. We've got some nice tonal variances in all the panels on both the Royal MO2 and the 71, so quite happy with that. Um, so what we're going to do, to do the mottling I need to mask off this top spine and just the wing root and the front of the cowl in as well. I don't want to risk getting any uh, Royal MO2 over what I've already painted, so I'm going to mask them off um, just to you know, make it easier. Or should I do it freehand? Shout out if you know what you want me to do. Mm. Okay, we'll do a freehand. 
I'll clean this up and we'll come back. Okay, as you can see, I chickened out a little bit. Um, I've just masked up the top part. Not the wing roots, I haven't gone right up. I just literally want to protect that spine. Uh, quite a bit of work involved there, I don't want to ruin it by looking up the mottling, which is the standard good chance of doing. Uh, mottling is this is what we're going for, as you can see here. So it's just long the upper surfaces, the tail underneath, and it stops before it gets underneath. So it's just very, very light mottling. Um, I'm not going to use that as a template, I'm just going to do my own. So we've got the all um, O2 H70, Mr. Hobby. Just so you guys can witness this live on camera. So we'll see if it goes wrong, which hopefully it won't. Put the lid back on that for safety. A little bit of UMP thinner. A little bit too much there. What we'll do, we'll have a little practice on our sheet from the other day, so I'm just gonna make sure that's well and truly pulled through. And all we're gonna do is the exact same technique I was using on the uh, panels for the fading. Obviously we don't want to blast paint on it like we've just done there, so we'll wipe the tip. So we're gonna test it on here. All we're gonna do is exactly the same way we did the uh, panel fading. So make sure we'll pull through. So we're just going to dot and dab with the airbrush, pull the trigger back. And as you can see, you can slowly build it up. That's exactly what we're going to do. And obviously we're going to vary the size. Remodeling. What we'll do, I think I'm going to thicken that paint up a little bit. It's a little bit too thin. I thought it had a little bit too much thinner. That should do nicely. What we're aiming for here is a true 50 50 mix. That was probably about 70 70 30 there, so a little bit too much. Name, so that's fine. There we go. Right, so there's the practice. So on with the booth. Two things are clean again, and I'm with the real deal. So, pick a point where we'll start at. We'll start right in the middle. Random shapes and patterns. Not the best quality to pick up there because it's. Quite samey to the um, RLM 65. So we'll just pick a point, we'll pick a point in the middle there, we'll start there. We'll do random dots. 
random shapes, different sizes. Little to big, different shapes. Another as we go. There we go, again, I don't know whether you can see that on camera. Uh, try that bit off there. It's quite hard trying to add random spots. You tend to find yourself clustering in one area. Uh, I'm not sure how well that looks, but... I can add some random patterns in there as well. Just be the more random you are. How do we get? So I'm not sure I'll look at how well that looks, it might look absolutely rubbish. I have no idea. Okay, that's dried now. So what I've done, there's a couple of areas where I've gone a little bit too heavy on the tail there. There's not much uh, separation between the grey and the blue. I kind of joined it together, so I'm just going to separate that. And also at the front, just there, I've somehow managed to acquire a nice little scratch. So I'm just going to touch that up on camera as well, I'll show you, just build up the paint around it. So we're starting to have the exact same way we did the, uh, the mottling and the fading. So I'm just dabbing it with paint and then coming back with air to dry it off. So. So what you can do is any areas where it's come together, I'm going to do the booth off because obviously I can, there's not a lot of paint being sprayed, so hopefully you can see what's going on. So there we go, so what we did, we're just separating that grey up a little bit. With the RM65, so it's separated it so it doesn't make it look as joined up. I've seen anywhere else where you come together. Let's give it a dab. Obviously, when you turn it around, be aware that the paint at the back will be wet. And again, anyway, here, obviously. Like I said, the more random I try to be, the more it seems to want to collect together. So if I use the blue just to separate it a little bit. Hopefully. It could look a bit better. Like I say, you want to see when things go wrong. Well, there you go, that went very slightly wrong for me. So we're rectifying that now by just adding a bit more of the RLM 65 just to differentiate the tones. That'll make the mottle and hopefully stand out and appear a little bit more random than it was before. So if we spin around. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. It's not brilliant. It'll do me. That's for sure. 
Okay, back on the workbench, I've removed the masking. Um, quite happy with the result. Um, not the best model in the world, but I'm happy with it. It's quite a subtle colour to see. There's a bloody canopy again. Uh, it's quite a subtle can uh, colour to see over the RLM65, but it is there. Um, I'm quite happy with it. It's a lot more random now. I've gone round it with the um, RLM65 to take it back a little bit. And that scratch you can barely see anymore as well, which is good. So that's my take on doing mottling, bit of panel shading, which I hope you can see on the overhead now. Let's move that canopy out of the way. I uh, hope you can see it on the various panels where I've lightened the centres and we've had some, almost a mottled effect to them as well. And obviously the mottling on the side, which, yeah, I'm not too, too unhappy about it. It looks okay to me. Um, I know a couple of you guys were waiting to see how I did this and you just see me do it literally on the wing there uh, in front of you guys. If I went quiet on film, I, I do apologise. I was uh, concentrating quite a lot there. So if there's a bit of footage of what I'm saying, nothing for a while, then you know why. Um, but there we go. So we've pre-faded all the panels. Uh, so we've got faded panels. We've got the pre-shading showing through rather nice. So that gives a nice weathered effect to the paintwork. We've got the mottling on the sides, as I said I'd do. Um, and that's it. So really, we're ready for the next step, which will be part 12, I think it is, which we will be covering decal in this time. So we'll put a gloss coat down using Johnson's Clear. Uh, we'll get the decal out of the way and then we'll come back, put another clear coat down in preparation for part 13, which will be weathering. Uh, you may be wondering why I've got this canopy free. Uh, you remember this is the one I lost. It was glued in position whilst it was sprayed and it came up off its own accord, if I'm honest. Uh, because this I'm having, we look forward, it's going to be open like so. So being in its open position, side on, like so, open. So what I did, while it was off, I thought there was no point gluing it back on just for you know, a couple of steps. Took all the glue off inside of a knife, just scraped it off and underneath of the canopy. I then hand painted the RLMO2, the interior colour, to the edges. I got a spare canopy from the box, one of the ones I'm not going to use. Literally butted it up to the edge, sprayed the RLM65, so that gave a clean demarcation between the two colours. Same on the other side, and that's job done. So that's ready for when we unmask it and stick it in position like so, um, giving that open canopy effect. Um, hope that mottling helped you guys. Like I say, just Light passes, build them up as you go. Uh, make sure your paint's thin enough, but not too thin, because it'll spider leg or run and what have you. And just dot and dab on the airbrush, back and forth, practice on a bit of paper first or a bit of card like I did. And as you get a dab of paint, go on, you'll see it wet. If you angle it right, you'll see where it's wet. Cut back to where and dry that bit off, and then build it up. You want irregular shapes. As you can see, although I was using dot and dab, there's no real round bits of paint. What I've done is I've added dabbed a little bit and then got up or down and added like a horror you know diagonal piece to it and built it up that way so it gives random effects there are a couple of rounder parts on there um but obviously the more random the better it's okay i'm happy with it a lot, lot better once we get decals on because the decals bring models to life i think so that's just for today uh paul fantastic girl model i'll be back with part 12 i think it is uh very soon over the next week or so and uh, we're really getting on with this now, ready to get it finished. Uh, we've got the undercarriage to do, which is, isn't much. Uh, I've got an email there as well. Uh, we've got the antenna wire, which I'll show you how to do with a bit of easy line rigging. A little bit of weathering, uh, nothing too extreme because I don't want to cover up all my nice paintwork I'm quite happy with. Um, and a few finishing touches, unmask it, and away we go. Um, so I'll catch you soon with the next part, and I'll see you on the forum. So take care, guys. See you later.